What is up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about and breaking down the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade as we're heading into the third week of October in 2019. I also want to break down the overall markets and take a look at the futures so we can plan our individual stock picks for this upcoming week so we can better understand where the market might be pushing based on what the futures are looking like right now and by the way <clears throat> excuse me guys by the way for those of you guys that don't know the futures market actually opens every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so we can see the S&P the Nasdaq the Dow right we can see gold crude oil natural gas silver a bunch of futures so again we can better plan for that upcoming week in terms of ETFs and individual stocks so if you enjoy this video if you find value you in this video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content about the stock market both trading and investing and join our discord group chat and our facebook group 100 free of charge those are linked down below in the description box so guys this past week was a very good week in the stock market let's take a look at the s p very quickly before we take a look at the futures so if we go to the five day five minute we can see this past week's performance of the S&P. So we opened up on the 7th, kind of flat, we dumped. The next day, we saw a big dump and a, and a pretty bad close at that, down to about 28.92. And then the next three days were absolutely amazing because on Friday, actually, there was a partial trade deal between the U.S. and China that was agreed upon. And if you guys want to learn more about that, go to my previous video from Friday, watch that so you can get more detail. But to sum it up, this was very good for the market, right? The China, the U.S. trade war, this has been really a, a very big negative drag on the market over the past 18 months, and any positive news that comes out of that situation is good for the market, right? Because the market in general hates uncertainty. It hates when things are up in the air. Now that there's a partial trade agreement, that's good, right? That That's really good. That's optimistic for the market, hence why the market shot up aggressively, right? You guys can see on Friday, we gapped up from 29.37 all the way up to 29.93. That's almost a 60-point pop from this closed price up to the high on Friday. That's very, 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 very good, right? And then we saw a massive dump towards the last 20 minutes of the market this past Friday, which wasn't that crazy because, again, the markets have gone gone up so much in the matter of the past 48, 72 hours that a little pullback, okay, it's a bit of a healthy pullback, right? It's nothing too crazy. And if we go to these futures, right, the ES slash ES, this is the E-mini S&P 500 index futures. These are currently up $4.75 right now, up 0.15%. So not too crazy right now, not too crazy movement to the upside or to the downside. But we can see one key thing here is that we are seeing a bit of consolidation on top of that 180 SMA support here on the five day five minute and remember guys we dumped aggressively in the last 20 minutes of this market on Friday so the fact that we are consolidating here and the futures are showing that that's a good sign that the S&P right now is trying to continue this uptrend that we've been on over the past couple of days, right? And if we zoom out a bit, let's say to the 20-day, actually, this is not too important at this point in time, but you can see that we are kind of on a technical basis. We are really breaking out here of these moving averages, but the one thing I want to focus on for you guys and me personally is this five-day, five-minute chart where, again, we are holding that moving average support, right? That's very important. If we go to the natural, or not natural gas, to the NASDAQ slash NQ, very similar, right? We hit a peak 79.18, right? Sold off in the last 20 minutes of the market on Friday. Now we're seeing consolidation on top of that 180 SMA support. And the NQ is currently up right now in terms of the futures, up 15 points, up 0.2%. So right now, this is very good for the bulls, right? And how I kind of use the futures in my trading is I'm watching them heavily pre-market and of course Sunday heading into the Monday session so again I can kind of plan out where the market is going let's say for example the futures gap up immensely they're up 
half a percent, one percent heading into the week, I'm thinking in my head, okay, this might be a green week at least to start out the week, right? But let's say the futures on the flip side, they're gapping down aggressively on Sunday. That could indicate, hey, it might be a red day heading into this upcoming week. And uh, that's kind of how I view it. And of course, throughout the entire week, the futures are also open. So you can see how they're moving after hours through the night as well. So it's a very awesome thing to look at if you're into tracking the overall markets, right? And the Dow Jones right now is up 62 points, up 0.25%. And on the five-day, five-minute, just like the S&P and the NASDAQ, we're holding that 180 SMA support, looking to continue this uptrend. So right now, based on the futures, guys, the markets are looking good. The bulls are in charge. And again, if this continues into tomorrow, guys, let's say this green, maybe we gap up another couple percentage points, not percentage points, but um, like let's say another 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3% up tomorrow. This could signal a green day tomorrow. And uh, again, maybe we go to those all-time highs potentially, um, you know, in these markets, especially with this good news in terms of the partial trade deal. But like I mentioned on Friday's video, guys, don't just view this as sunshines and rainbows. Everything is over because it's not, right? There's a lot of things in the trade war right now that are still unattended. There's still no agreement upon these things. So this could cause a lot of tension leading on over these next couple of weeks, despite the optimism, despite the good news that we got in terms of this partial trade deal. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts right now in the markets? What are your opinions on what's going to happen this upcoming week? I would love to know what you guys have to think about that. So what am I personally watching, right? We got some stuff stocks and ETFs to talk about from some subscribers that actually messaged me, but what I'm personally watching this week, it's going to be a lot of these inverse ETFs, guys, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, right? And I always am on this channel. Natural gas being the main one that I'm watching, as well as UGAS and DGAS, right? These are two inverse pairs. This is a pair of inverse ETFs that trade based upon natural gas, right? And I made a video a couple of days ago. You guys really liked that video. That video did very well, explaining my opinion on natural gas, you gas and D gas and really things are in in play right now they're getting really interesting especially with how natural gas is moving right now remember i said the natural gas futures are open on sunday 6 p.m eastern uh, uh standard time as well just like the overall markets and you can see the nasdaq right now is up or not the nasdaq i keep i keep mixing these up guys i think it's because one's slash ng and one slash nq so my mind's playing tricks on me but anyway slash ng G is currently up 1.31% right now, up almost 3 cents. And if we go to the 184 hour chart, and by the way, for those of you guys that don't know, the inverse ETFs that I trade, again, UGAS and DGAS, UGAS goes up whenever natural gas is going up, right? That's how it trades. DGAS goes up whenever natural gas is selling off, right? So at this point, natural gas is in a clear downtrend, right? We're looking at this four hour chart. I personally look at moving averages like this green line here and this yellow line and we can see that these are acting as resistance points right over the past couple of weeks ever since we've dumped from 270 down to where we are right now to about 220 we've been getting rejected by the light blue line which is the exponential moving average also known as the EMA the 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 green line which is the 50 SMA also known as the 50 simple moving average, and this yellow line, which is the 180 SMA, also known as the 180 day simple moving average. And you can see these lines drawn across natural gas at this point, showing a clear support at 220, a resistance at 230, right? And we can see with the price action right now, the fact that we're gapping up, we're holding 220 pretty nicely, right? Despite the fact that we're still trending below this 50 SMA. So this is putting natural gas kind of in a funky spot, right? This upcoming week, what I'm going to be watching for is... If we break out of this uh, this 50 SMA here and into the 230s, that is where the bulls are going to take charge in natural gas, in my opinion. And that is where you gas is going to be showing that breakout potential, right? But let's say we do end up getting hit here 
in these next couple of weeks as production is really ramping up in natural gas heading into these winter months as injections are continuing here hey maybe we start to dump as we start to see supply rise, maybe we start to dump down into 220. If we break 220, that's going to be a signal that the bears are in charge here, and degas is going to be a play from there, right? Because if we break 220 to the downside, hey, the next support that I'm seeing from that point, guys, is going to be around 210, 211, 212, right? So that's a lot of downside where we could end up playing degas and make a monster return if it does in terms of natural gas fill down all the way to that 211 point which would be around an eight to nine cent gap down right and if that does happen guys we could be getting a run here in d gas you know up to 170 maybe maybe 165 and that could be a nice 10 12 15 percent gain there in d gas but if you guys watch my video on natural gas a couple of days ago I was talking about how my theory right now is that D gas and natural gas, well, natural gas, honestly, is going to be weak for another week, two weeks maybe even three weeks, right? This is based on some research that I personally did, right? And after that, I think in November is when natural gas is going to start to see a little rally here where you gas is going to be very, very good, a very, very good play, right? So as of now, those are just the very basic technical spots that I'm watching and kind of my time horizon for D gas and you gas. At this point, I still think there's potential for degas. I'll be honest with you guys. Maybe for the next one to two weeks. After that, I think you guys are going to be full steam ahead. And I know a lot of you guys have been buying you guys here. That's ballsy of you. I have not done that. I'll be honest. I have not bought any you guys. I've not bought any degas because I typically don't swing trade these. A lot of you guys know that at this point. But some of you guys do that for yourselves. But for me, that is too risky, especially in my main account. Maybe in my play account where I'm a bit more risky, maybe some penny stocks here and there, maybe some crazy speculative stocks, maybe some overnight uh, leveraged ETF holds. Maybe I'll trade it in that account. And of course, like I mentioned in that previous video, I'll let you guys know that. So that is what I'm watching in terms of natural gas, U gas, D gas. Gold is another one that I'm watching this week, guys. Gold broke a very critical support level here at 1495. We broke that. Now it seems like we're going to be heading down to that previous support, which is going to be at 1465. You guys can see we sold off from this level. Um, 1545 a couple of weeks ago this was actually towards the end of September and we got all the way down to this level at 1465 and we popped from there making that level of support and you guys can see this little arrow I drew out here um, based on these trend lines right this can definitely happen right from here we may be going down testing 1465 that may drag down GDX and GDX is a gold ETF that obviously tracks gold and if this push pushes down to a lower low here to continue that downtrend and it definitely will if gold tests that 1465 level JDST which goes up whenever uh, GDX is going down at a 3x rate is going to be in play here right and GDX 3x rate let me explain what that means this is a leveraged ETF right this trades based upon GDX. Whenever GDX, the ETF I just showed you guys, let's say it goes down 2%. Since JDST is a 3x leveraged ETF, it's going to go up 6%, right? Down 2% for GDX, multiply that by 3, that is 6, and that is what JDST is going to go up in terms of a rate, roughly here, right? So JDST... I'm liking it, right? I think there's potential, especially here in the short term, if these markets do rally in these next couple of days due to this optimism that we got in, t in terms of this uh, partial trade deal, you know, that may send gold down to, again, that 1460 level. And JDST is going to have a lot of potential there, right? But on the flip side, if we go back to gold, let's say we break above these moving averages this upcoming week, that's going to be the bulls taking over, in my opinion. And the inverse to JDST is JNUG, which goes 
goes up whenever gold and GDX are going up. So this is one that I'll watch. Hey, if gold starts to run, and that is also a possibility in these crazy volatile markets that we've been in over these past couple of weeks, guys. Anything can happen. Literally anything can happen, which is why I have situations and I have scenarios for every single uh, um, um, hypothetical situation that could happen in the market, right? I know how to make money when these markets go up. I also know how to make money when these markets go down, which is very, very important. And honestly, these are tools in my toolbox that when the, uh, when the opportunity brings itself, I'll take out my toolbox and I'll pick Okay, this is what I trade when the markets go up. Let me do that today. This is what I trade when the markets go down. Okay, let me do that today, right? So it's also just an important thing to have a bunch of different things that you, you know, strategies and um, options to trade when the markets are going up and down, right? So another inverse pair that I want to talk about that's interesting right now is this biotech pair, LABU. L-A-B-D. These two trade based upon S-P-S-I-B-I. S-P-S-I-B-I, right? This is a biotechnology index. And whenever this, whenever this index is going up, L-A-B-U is going up in price, right? At a, at a 3x rate. Whenever that index is going down, L-A-B-D is going up at a 3x rate, right? And if you noticed on S-P-S... IBI, you can see right now if it pulls up that we're trending right below this 50 SMA here. The RSI is getting closer to overbought status. So what I'm interested in seeing right now is if we get rejected by this 50 SMA here, LABD will be in play because that's a clear rejection. The bears are taking in charge at that point. They're taking charge, right? And we may be seeing a downside move from there. And again, when this goes down, LABD is going up. But the awesome thing is, if we break out, there's a lot of upside potential here in SPS IBI. I think we could end up breaking up to this 180 SMA because based on previous patterns, we did that, right? This is looking very similar to this previous pattern that we saw a couple of weeks ago. We saw consolidation. We tested that 50 SMA. We did not get rejected by it we broke out of it and then we filled all the way up to that 180 sma resistance this is literally setting up exactly as it did a couple of weeks ago right if we break out this has on a percentage basis around a four to five percent margin if it fills the gap up to that 180 sma resistance and these are 3x leveraged etfs that we trade so five percent times three that's roughly a 15 percent return potential on LABU if we break out, right? That's if we break out. And you can see it here. I'll show you guys. It's roughly 12, 13, 14, roughly that level, um, that area in terms of percentage of profit. Let's take a look at LABD very quickly just in case we get rejected and dump. You know, this one can offer a nice 10, 12, 13, roughly percent, um, very similar to LABU um, in terms of the profit potential that we can make. So those are the three main inverse ETF pairs that I'm watching for this upcoming week, LABU, LABD, UGAS, DGAS, of course, UGAS and DGAS right now, guys, there's a lot of potential in those, and JDST and JNUG. So, you guys, if you watch my video on Friday, you know that I have an SPY option, um, one contract right now, a put option, right? Right now, I'm hedging against the potential downside, although there's a lot of optimism right now, I think the markets rose up very, very quickly, and I just bought... It was like an 100, ah, I think it was like not a crazy amount of money, guys. Really, it wasn't nothing crazy. It was like an $111 premium that I spent. Um, expiration date, like on the 28th of October or something like that. And this is just to protect myself against the potential downside that the stock market um, still has here, in my opinion, over the next couple of weeks, right? And sure, I can lose my entire premium. I can lose my money there, but it's okay because... 
options, you use these to hedge against your positions, right? I made a lot of money this past week on my long-term portfolio because the overall markets were going up like crazy. So now if I lose some money on that long-term portfolio this upcoming week, this maybe in the next two weeks, if the markets dump, I'll be making money on this put option on this, con on this contract that I have, right? And then I'll be able to take that profit if I make any money. This is if, guys. And then I'll be able to buy buy shares at a lower price in these other companies that went down if I choose to do so, right? That's kind of the idea in terms of options. Well, that's one of the ideas. There's a lot of ideas. There's, there's a lot of philosophies out there. People actually just day trade options. They swing trade them. I don't really do that too much, to be completely honest with you guys. Um, I'm more of a, like a couple contracts a year type of guy. But like I mentioned on the channel before, I do want to get heavier here into options. I think there's a lot of opportunity out there, but it's really risky, guys. It's really, really risky, and I think it's more for advanced traders and investors. I've been in the stock market for like six, seven years at this point. I consider myself not a beginner anymore. I'm not advanced. I wouldn't consider myself advanced. I still have a lot of stuff to learn. This game, guys, you're never going to learn all of it, right? This is a, this is a never-ending learning experience in terms of the stock market. I'm not going to come on here and lie to you and be like, I have it all figured out. I know every single thing about the stock market because it's not true, right? No one does at this point. You have to learn for the rest of your life and it's just stages, right? You start out, you look at stocks, maybe you start dabbling in trading. Then a couple of years later, you're like, oh, what are options? Oh, maybe I'll start doing options, right? You're not supposed to do it right off the uh, the get-go. I see a lot of beginners trying to do that. And uh, I would say stick to trading um, shares get used to the market, get used to how things go, and then start trading options, right? But overall here, you know, on the SPY, I'm seeing a strong resistance at 297, right? We closed below that this past week. I see a support at 295. A lot of people have been talking about this. So I'm thinking if we break 295, this is going to fill down to about 287, right? That's very, very possible. And I have a put option again. I think the strike is at 288, or I think it's at 286. I forget. Um, I, I, I'll go over that in tomorrow's video, but I forget off the top of my head right now. It's either one of those strikes. So, again, I think there's potential that we can get down to 287, especially if this optimism does wear off. Maybe we get some negative stuff again. Who knows, right? Anything can happen. But that's the low point, in my opinion, on SPY. Another stock <clears throat> Apple. Apple's been one that I've been asked a lot about. At this point, I think it's too late to get into Apple, um, especially a long-term investment at this point, guys. I wouldn't be buying Apple at this point, um, even as a swing trade, right? It's so high up. It's at all-time highs, 237. RSI is looking ridiculously overbought, right? Earnings are coming up, which can fluctuate the stock like crazy, depending on what they end up reporting. Who knows, right? But at this point, I'd only get into Apple if we sell off down to this 50 SMA and really just retest that 225 level, that's a level right now that I'm seeing as a pretty strong support. Again, if we get there, that's also going to be putting us on top of that 50 SMA. This could be a, a pretty decent entry. But overall, I think there's just a lot of opportunity, more opportunity in other uh, ETFs that we talked about, uh, like UGAS, like DGAS, as opposed to Apple, right? And of course, just like every week, guys, nothing really changes here. I'm watching the market ETFs, right? This is something that, if you notice on my videos, I always have these up. And I don't know why Microsoft, God, it's, how did you get in there, Microsoft? You are not a market ETF. I don't know how that happens. Sometimes these stocks just randomly appear in my watch list. I usually just do that by accident, probably. But TVIX, this is the main one I'm watching, right? If the markets get rocky again, who knows? Markets start to sell off. This one's going to be one to watch, right? This trades on volatility. This trades, it does, it does well. It goes up when the markets are selling off. SQQQ, this is my favorite, one of my favorite ones as well. This goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. And if you guys have experience in the markets, not always, but typically when the markets are red, the NASDAQ is the reddest out of the bunch. I don't know why, but 
Actually, I do know why. It's because of the tech stocks, right? It's because of the tech stocks. They typically get hit a bit harder than some of these more, uh, I guess you can say, value safer plays like are that that are in the Dow or something, right? So SQQQ goes up whenever the Nasdaq is selling off. I'm watching this one very, very heavily, and of course, all the other ones here. These are ones that I always watch. SPXS goes up when the S&P is selling off. TQQQ is the inverse to SQQQQ. This goes up whenever um, um, the NASDAQ's going up. So these are always worth watching in my personal opinion. So I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys. If you enjoyed it, let me know down below in the comments what you thought about it, what stocks what ETFs are you watching? And drop a like. If you guys enjoyed it, that's the best way that you can tell me that you enjoyed it. Leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. Um, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. I'm making videos daily, Monday through Friday, Saturday, typically no upload, and Sunday I have an upload. So six times a week I'm making videos here on this channel. So yeah, get on, get on the journey, guys. Get on this channel join the movement. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.